I am Maria from Read Fine Books and I've just finished the first chapter of The Picture of Dorian Gray. I'll be sharing my impressions now. Please follow along this week for the next chapters. Everything I read so far was delightful and beautiful and full of great ideas. But the first thing I love is the setting. From the scene we learned that the artist Basil is in the process of painting the picture of Dorian Gray. He is in his studio, but from his studio the image he sees is that of the garden. And in the garden we have a paradise-like picture. This is something I hadn't known about Dorian Gray the first time I read the book, but uh, Oscar Wilde was extremely picky in choosing his plants that will go into this scene. He was actually very passionate about plants in general, and the ones that go here do blossom at the same time. We have lilac and roses and the laburnum tree, and the plant called June hollyhocks. These black flowers against the lilac blossoms, the laburnum tree created such a beautiful picture in my mind. And he chose the laburnum tree, which is spectacular in itself, but it's also poisonous. So his beauty is corrupted. It seemed so fitting. I love this kind of details in his writing. And, of course, the writing itself is extraordinary, it's, it's full of dialogue that makes it very dynamic, but it's full of interesting remarks as well. Throughout this chapter I remembered how much I fell in love with his writing. He uses dialogue extremely well to express ideas and two points of view. He debates art and beauty and what's the point of art. What's the point of beauty? What are relationships? How to deal with them? So th through dialogue he exposes two points of view every time because the dialogue is an actual debate. In reality this debate goes on from ancient Greece until now. What is the point of art? Is it art in itself, art for the sake of art, for the sake of exposing beauty? Or does it have or should have a deeper meaning, should have emotions? And this all starts from the refusal of the artist Basil to expose the picture of Dorian Gray because it has too much of himself in it. I found that beautiful. He put so much emotion and everything he felt for Dorian is in a painting. That idea that the artist puts emotion in his painting or the other idea that art shouldn't be about emotion, it should only be about beauty, is a classic debate. And I love the way it's showed here through dialogue. The dialogue is between Basil and Lord Henry Wotton. They both have different ideas of what art should be and the purpose of art should be. And when Basil confesses, he, Dorian is the one that makes him show his emotion in his art, Lord Wotton is very intrigued and really wants to meet him. What I found out was uh, Oscar Wilde's true opin opinion of art was expressed through Lord um, Wharton's ideas. He says, We live in an age when men treat art as if it were meant to be a form of autobiography. We have lost the abstract sense of beauty. Oscar Wilde himself thought that art for art's sake is sufficient. But their debate remains interesting in the book. Here are some of my favorite quotes from this chapter. What odd chaps you painters are! You do anything in the world to gain a reputation. As soon as you have one, you seem to want to throw it away. 
It is silly of you, for there is only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. Beauty, the real beauty, ends where an intellectual expression begins. Intellect is in itself an exaggeration, and destroys the harmony of any face. The moment one sits down to think, one becomes all nose, or all forehead, or something horrid. Look at the successful men in any of the learned professions, how perfectly hideous they are, except of course in the church, but then in the church they don't think. You seem to forget that I'm married, and the one charm of marriage is that it makes a life of deception necessary for both parties. I never know where my wife is, and my wife never knows what I'm doing. When we meet, we do meet occasionally when we dine out together or go down to the dukes, we tell each other the most absurd stories with the most serious faces. My wife is very good at it, much better in fact than I am. She never gets confused over her dates and I always do, but when she dies find me out, she makes no row at all. I sometimes wish she would, but she merely laughs at me. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, we'll see each other in the next chapters. Have a great week!